Today in the news, we got early benchmarks, leaked benchmarks, and crashes. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. The RTX 2070 benchmarks are out. Actually, they won't be out for a few hours until Tuesday at 8 a.m., but Hard OCP has released their numbers. They were able to source a 2070 overseas, and since they haven't signed any NDAs with Nvidia, they can do whatever they want with their benchmark stats. Looking at the numbers, it seems like it is consistently faster than the last gen GTX 1080 by around 16%. The cards that were used for the testing was the MSI RTX 2070, Gaming Z and the uh, GTX 1080 Gaming X from MSI. The difference here is not as significant as the difference between last gen's 1070 and the gen before that's 980, but it's still something. Now, of course, the price is the main issue. With the 1070 launching at 379 and this 2070 launching at an elusive 499, which by the way probably won't exist, it's probably going to be some super cheap blower style GPU that's always out of stock this GPU is much more expensive. So if you have a 1080, the 2070 is probably not worth it. But if you've been struggling with a 980 or an AMD card that isn't a Vega card, then this 2070 might be a sweet spot. About AMD, the 2070 is about 20% faster than the Vega 64, and price-wise, they're about the same. I wonder if we're gonna get a price drop on the AMD cards, because no one is going to buy them, especially with Nvidia's RTX tag on the 2070. So what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. Speaking of AMD, the alleged 680 and 670 rumors seem to have been a bust as there were no announcements this weekend. Although some recent leaks lets us know that it might not be called the 680 or 670 at all. A Thai overclocker by the name of Tom Apisak shared screenshots of an AMD RX 590. It's hard to compare these stats from this specific screenshot since there seem to be almost no differences GPU wise, but if we compare what Tom said was the Firestrike Extreme graphics score and the 3 d Mark's Time Spy score, this GPU only manages around a 10% improvement. It scores a 5028 in Time Spy and 7060 in Firestrike Extreme. Unless this GPU comes in at $170, maybe $200 maximum, I don't really see it have its place in today's market. I'll put the link to the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark down below if you want to take a look at it. Moving on, we got what everybody talked about over the last week, the 9900K and Principal Technologies. After the chaos of their benchmarks, they went ahead and retested everything. Their testing methodology is technically still flawed though. For example, they used many benchmark stations without taking into consideration that two identical GPUs can boost differently. Another thing is how they take the median result instead of the average. I don't know why they do that. Anyways, all of this to let you guys know that in the end, the difference between the Ryzen 2700X and the 9900K went from the i9 being 50% faster all around to around 12%. Big difference, especially considering the fact that the i9 is 60 to 70% more expensive. Yikes, Intel, you might be the best in gaming, but you're certainly not the best in price to performance. Moving on, you know how Android and iOS have had some text messages that would break your device making it shut down, crash, or restart? Well, the same thing is happening to PS4 consoles. If you open that message on your PS4, your game will glitch out, crash, and break your system. Some people are using it maliciously in competitive play by sending it out to the other team and crashing their system for an automatic win. To avoid that issue, you can open your messages on your phone and delete the messages from there rather than on your PS4. Well, a little update, as I was editing this, it seems like the issue has been fixed. I would still open my messages via the phone app for a while just to make sure in case your console isn't updated. Have you ever cleaned your PC parts using weird methods? I have. I think it was a few years back and my friend brought me a motherboard that was caked in thick dust and some other sticky substances. So what I did is I took an old toothbrush and I went to town on it underwater to remove all of the crass and it worked flawlessly afterwards. 
In this specific case though, Verbauer shows us how he uses his dishwasher to clean out his components. Overclocking often means finding creative solutions to prevent condensations from killing your parts. Well, Vaseline is what he uses, and when he wants to get rid of it, he puts the parts he coated in the dishwasher. I'll leave a link down below to his video if you want to learn more about why and how. All right, so this concludes today's video. Don't forget to drop me a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the RX 590 leak and the 2070's performance. You can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. So go ahead and do this, go ahead and do that, and I'm gonna go ahead and stay frosty and give you a snap.